Staples bending, broken rule. Hound dog howling, bull frog croaking. Everything is broken. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Dad's Divorce Live. I'm Matt Allen, editor of dadsdivorce.com. With us today is author Isidore Buckman. Isidore has uh, just written a book called God's Grace and Divorce, which deals with uh, religion, his uh, wife's mental illness, and divorce. Uh, Isidore, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much to be there. A and first off, if you would just talk a little bit about what was your motivation behind writing this book. First of all, I, I needed to put my thoughts on paper to relieve uh, the stress. Mm -hmm. So writing does help. And uh, well, I found out afterwards that uh, there were so many marriages suffering um, where the, the wife or the husband has a mental disorder. And in my case, it's a bipolar of my wife. And I wanted uh, really to share um, that uh, as a testimony, testimony to others uh, saying that, well, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And what are you hoping readers will get from this book and your experiences? Well, again, to say that you're not alone, uh, to hang in there, um, to trust in God, uh, keep on praying, um, better times will come, and uh, again, keep uh, the focus on the family, because the family really needs you, uh, and uh, <coughs> it's just do what you, what you need to do as a, as a, as a responsible parent. And did you have any sort of background in, in writing or, or religious background, or what, what are your qualifications in this? Okay, um, I'm a layman, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yes, I did uh, uh, read the Bible several times through. The first time I took everything in that was there, because it's in the Bible. The second time, second time uh, I had a pencil and made a few question marks. The third time I started to ask questions, and um, a lot of unanswered questions came up, and uh, they have still not been answered by myself. Well, uh, you, you mentioned you know the Bible and your uh, religious background. Now, when people get married, they usually take a vow uh, in a church before God, vowing to stay together through sickness and health. Obviously, divorce uh, breaks that vow, but you see that as as something uh, that may be necessary to do. So what can churches do for families in that situation? The, uh, the wow I made um, was a huge concern. Um, when, I, when we got married, we were going to show the world uh, how marriages work. And uh, even our friends, uh, one in particular that was uh, living common law, looked at us as a, as a married couple and decided to get married. So we were really going to be the example how marriage in a church should work. And uh, when the problem started, um, you know, everybody would kind of keep it secret. Mm -hmm. uh, the family started to fall apart, and it could not be um, kept secret anymore. And uh, as with many uh, mental illnesses, usually it's not the responsible parent uh, that initiates divorce. It's the ill person that happened uh, in our case. <coughs> and um, so I said, absolutely not. Um, I will not divorce you, although it would have been good if I had done it at the time. Mm -hmm. So the family really fell apart. And um, we had uh, police cruises in front of our house. The teenagers uh, acted totally wrongly, uh, broke the law. And uh, then my wife and I had, were um, asked or actually required to take secular counseling uh, from the city where we're living in. And uh, she didn't uh, attend the counseling. I did. And uh, twice during the counseling session, the counselor advised me to divorce. And I said, absolutely not. Um, I'm a Christian. I believe in the power of prayer. And divorce is no option. Now, I, re I realize now um, I was naive. And I should have uh, actually taken the advice. So what was, 
I guess, what was that like weighing the decision on you know, sort of going against your religious beliefs and the realities of sort of this crumbling family? Uh, it was very difficult, and it was like a, uh, a flag in a wind. Um, I was talking to um, my friend, a friend, uh, I read uh, Christian books, and I'm a listener of uh, Christian broadcast. Uh, focused on the family as one of them I uh, highly respect and everybody advised no you cannot do it mm -hmm. and then uh, the reality was no you cannot go on and the family is falling apart the uh, children are hurting and uh, I did uh, take um, we had to go to counseling after um, the, the nervous breakdown of my my wife the counselor had a, a program a textbook program but no help whatsoever mm -hmm. and uh, I did talk to pastors and some of them were, some of them were helpful but the, all, about, all of them basically said yeah divorce and um, I discussed it with my medical doctor and uh, the medical doctor had just talked to my wife and uh, turned into a huge argument and so the priest told me to do it and then the med medical doctor called me in the office and said listen if you don't divorce, you're going to get ill, and your family will fall apart. So then I finally figured, okay, let's do it. But it, it was actually my wife again had the papers, and then I just signed them. And you've been able to successfully raise a family as a single parent. That's right. As soon as the uh, <coughs> divorce was done, um, I still had the problems with the kids. I've uh, got five children, four boys. It started to heal, and we became a family again. And it, it's just incredible the the blessings that we received um, after the divorce, and how much better and much more enjoyable it was to be a parent than before. So finally, what do you see as the essential building blocks for uh, building a, a healthy family? Again. Uh, it is best to have a mom and a dad, but if the two are in conflict, if it doesn't work, it's better to have one that right. takes charge and leads the family. What, uh, what I noticed with uh, two in conflict, um, one would give, a peeler was collapsing, the house was tilting, naturally the kids go to the low gravitation where it's easy, and the other one loses control. Like I. I lost control. Um, mm -hmm. I, I could not lead the family because there was a leak. But then as soon as the divorce was done, and I, I uh, ad addressed divorce, not separation. We have done separations a few times. Um, it didn't work. Uh, it has to be a, de a, a definite break, and then the kids know, okay, that's the way we're going. You have full control. The court allowed me... Uh, custody of the children that's when the healing began and that's what I would then recommend that uh, take the top step and do it if so necessary but not before counseling and everything has been tried uh, many 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 issues can be solved they're not as hard as mine if so by all means um, but if it's not possible not doing it too long right well Isidore thanks again for joining us uh, to all our viewers out there, the book again is God's Grace and Divorce. Uh, it's a good uh, read for those of us dealing with uh, religious issues during divorce, weighing the uh, religious beliefs against perhaps the realities of a, a crumbling marriage. Uh, if you want to find out more information on Isidore and his book, you can go to uh, godsgraceanddivorce.com or divorceforjustcause.com. So thanks again, Isidore. Thank you very much, then. And that'll do it for this edition of Dad's Divorce Live. I'm Matt Allen, editor of dadsdivorce.com. We'll see you next time. Broken pipe, broken tool. People bending, broken rule. Hound dog howling. Everything is broken.